الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا من سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحج حج محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me immense pleasure and a great feeling to return back to this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and such privileged friends that I had in my stay in the International Islamic University of Islamabad you can see that these are some of the fruits the bushra, the glad tidings that inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places on this word for the believers and we aspire that these words that we disseminate today will be none other than the glad tidings وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ And my ability is only by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Just to give people the tarqib, the encouragement that there are various places of learning where a person can go and learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and return back to this country and benefit humanity and firstly to benefit oneself And this concept of tarqib and tarqib that we find to encourage people <coughs> is part and parcel of the sunnah of the Qur'an and likewise the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as well that you find, find that the ayat in the Qur'an bayn al tarheeb wa tarheeb are between encouraging you to do something at the same time tarheeb telling you to stay away from something you find the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between bashir wa nadir between giving you glad tidings and warning you about certain instances or to stay away from certain actions Likewise, you find بَيْنَ وَعْدٌ وَوَعِيدٌ Between a promise and a stern chastisement that could be, that individual could be exposed towards. That is the sunnah of the Qur'an. And thus you find many occasions that we, we focus on the good things. <coughs> that people like to hear about the good things. What is inside paradise won't be given to us. The good blessings that you find inside paradise. All of these aspects that many people want to work and focus towards. And likewise the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was highlighted as many ayat inside the Quran. Ya ayu al-Nabiyu inna asalnaka shahida wa mubashira wa nadira. We have sent you a Prophet of Allah as a witness. At the same time Bashir, Bashiran wa nadira, one who warns and one who gives people the glad tidings. وما أرسلناك إلا كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون we did not send you to the whole of humanity except for to warn them and to give them the glad tidings or the blessings but indeed many of mankind don't have an understanding or have knowledge about this likewise we find in the bilhaqqi bashira wa nadira we did send you with the truth with reality with the Quran and we sent you as a warner and one to give glad tidings as well and thus you find that this concept of running in pairs as we began with Tarqeem and Tarheed وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْنْ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ Everything we've created in pairs that you may pay heed towards the concept of pairs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Now the pairs that we want to focus on or one side of that pair is the concept of Al-Jannah Wal-Nar As you find the hadith that Jannah is Haq Wal-Naru Haq that paradise is a reality, likewise hellfire is a reality as well. And so as I mentioned, many of us begin to sway towards the concept of studying about paradise, but naturally a person needs to have a yearning desire to enter into paradise, to know about the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And as the ulama talk about the ayat which talk about al naim talk about paradise, that the asma are exactly the same as the names that we live on a daily basis. As for the reality, they are totally different. So the fruits, the drinks, al-anhar, min laban, or min asal, 
او انهار من خمر the rivers of wine, of alcohol, pure alcohol, sharab and dhahura, mind you, that day in paradise. <coughs> the concept of water, milk, pure honey. These are all names that we can relate to. And likewise, the fruits that have been mentioned and the vegetables, etc. Wal ashjar, wal anhar, the rivers, the trees. It's so that insan can relate to this concept. As for its essence or its entity, it's totally different between this dunya and the akhirah. But just to bridge that gap, and that's why many ulama, they talk about, they write about, and in Taswir al-Fanni, write about to describe the Qur'an as if, you, as if you can visualize it. Many ulama have collected those ayat. And that's what you find in the Qur'an, has this deep nature that many of us can't seem to understand. We tend to skim read over the Qur'an. But the Qur'an has a science, if you study in the, in the science of ulum al-Qur'an, talking about make the Qur'an making tashbih, or making tamthil, making similarities between things of this dunya, and things of the akhirah. For example, many of the ayat which talk about the sending down of the rain from the heavens. And it mixes with the earth. And then you find that the vegetation begins to grow. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the parable of this dunya. And this is the concept of this dunya. That you find the vegetation, it grows. And then you find that it stems, it flows. And then it begins to wither away. And that's the dunya. And the dunya is just an allurement, a beautification of a short span of time. As you find in the verse, if I'm not mistaken, inside Surah Yunus, was the yinat, that the earth becomes alluring. And the ulama talk about, was the yinat, is used for a bridegroom, that she beautifies herself for that one day. And after a short while, the beauty begins to disappear. And as you find in the side point, any, a woman is married for four things. Either for her, her deen, her lineage, her honor, or her beauty. All of these will go away. Her wealth, her honor, her family lineage, and her beauty as well. Fadfar bidati deen, taribat yadaka. Seek the woman of religious nature, and you will be blessed. You'll find blessings inside your hand, meaning the, 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 the contract that you entered into. But here this, this verse, or this, uh, this word talking about was the yinat. Once again, it shows that it reaches a point of beauty, the land, and it begins to wither away. Has no value at all. And likewise, is the dunya. That you are attracted to the dunya, but after a short while, it will be taken away from you. And nothing will go with the individual, except for the a'mal, their righteous actions, which all of us, inshallah, through this month of Ramadan, are trying to build upon, to gain the maximum benefit in this month of Ramadan. To create that concept of la'allakum tattaqoon, that you may be pious individuals, because as you find that taqwa is none other as a shield between you and the hellfire. A sawmu jannah. As you find the hadith, the fasting is a shield. A shield that will protect you from falling into, into the hellfire. And that's what we want to discuss today is how can an individual, when he save themselves from the hellfire, or go into a descriptive nature of what is this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, at certain stages I mentioned, we do need to highlight the good things as well. But here, alhamdulillah, all of us being Muslims, at times we need to remind people the fearful things as well. That if you do such and such action, this could be your evil ending. But this could be the ending of such an individual. That does not mean that we send someone to the hellfire or we throw someone into paradise. That's not the role of any preacher or any individual. Even though some individuals may think that they have some label to go and label people, you are people of the hellfire and you are people of paradise. The way of the da'i is only to highlight to give that yearning, that inclination that people yearn. Either the mushtaqoon al jannah, a yearning desire to make it to paradise, and a strong commitment to stay away from the hellfire. فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأَدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَاسْ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْخُرُورِ Whoever is plucked out of the hellfire and thrown into paradise, فَقَدْ فَاسْ That is a successful individual. And then once again, as I began with, talking about this dunya, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْخُرُورِ the whole of this world is one great big deception. That's all that this dunya is. It will deceive you. It is nothing but a trickery, talbis, iblis, the deception of the devil. Everything in this dunya has no value in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter how much people promote the dunya. Even though, yes, you do need to seek the dunya for your welfare, for your family, for your children, and to have a good sustenance of living. But the real point of a mu'min is the dunya is in your hand, never enters into your heart. The day the dunya enters into your heart, then you may as well say salam upon yourself, which has happened to many individuals. And when that dunya goes straight into your heart, and your, everything in your life becomes the yearning of the dunya, then you may as well read 
your own funeral prayer upon yourself. That's why when Imam Ahmad is asked, can a person be rich and be a conscious and muttaqi as well at the same time? And he stated, what will, there's nothing wrong with a person being rich and having the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only once again when the dunya begins to trickle into your heart and take over all of your affairs. And that's you find when many people talk about the concept of that shirk is rampant amongst the Muslim land, that's true. وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرٌ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ Many of them believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what you find, but at the same time, those people who do not indulge in grave worship or calling upon the awliya, that does not mean that we don't believe in the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do believe in them. أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَا اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ That's the criteria. Who believe and have taqwa. A person who clings to the sharia will become a wali. That's why Ibn Taymiyyah highlights that every single individual, every single mu'min, for who a wali. If they're wali, if they stick to the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, stick to the halal and stay away from the haram, all of us become awliya Allah. And thus you find that this, this concept of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being the, the pious individuals, of seeking to get closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the way of every single mu'min to protect themselves from not falling into the punishment. And thus you find that the Quran inside Surah Al-Tahreem highlights why should a person not seek to protect themselves from the punishment of the hellfire? For example, you find Ya ayyul ladina, ya ayyul ladina amanu qu anfusakum ahlikum nara Oh, you believe save yourselves and your families from the hellfire. Many of us forget this concept of saving ourselves and our families from the hellfire. Because many of us are currently following a pattern of academia that religion has become an academic study for us. That's not what Deen of Islam is. Deen of Islam is a, is a powerful form of tazkiyah to nafs, purifying the soul, taking you out of the bulumat ila nur, taking you out of the realms of darknesses to the light, making tasfiyah with tazkiyah of the qalb, is an integral part of the sharia, to purify oneself. So many of us in our zeal to worry about other individuals, or to other groups, or other people, other societies, we, we fade our own selves. We forget our own selves, and we forget our own intermediate family and individuals around us. Save yourselves and your family from the fuel, from the hellfire, whose fuel is none other than men and stones. Upon it is angels who are stern and harsh guarding, guarding over this hellfire. They never ever disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are forever carrying out the commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lays, lays down upon them. And thus you find that many of us, unfortunately, will become the losers. You find in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَلَا ذَلِكَ وَالْخُسْرَانِ مُبِينَ So indeed on that day, those are the real losers on that day will be, who lose themselves and lose their families. How can a person lose their own self and lose their family? Meaning you don't focus upon your own self, you don't focus upon your family. The Muslim Ummah is made from the Muslim, the nucleus of the Muslim Ummah. When a Muslim family is corrupt, and you can see that how many Muslim families unfortunately are corrupt, the, the mass amount of divorce amongst Muslims, or even amongst so-called practicing Muslims, unwanted children, abortions, yani al-fawahish, spreading amongst Muslims, and amongst non-Muslims, is, is common at the moment, unfortunately. That, that shows the smaller picture of the greater picture of the state of the Muslims. Amongst the characteristics of Ibad rahman Returning back to the topic, why shouldn't we seek to protect ourselves from the punishment of the hellfire? They are the ones that pray, take 